Christians for God. And it's not like it was scientific research, but when I you know, Googled in and, and, and looked at that, it's just, what was the most frequently asked question in the Bible? What was that, that, that question that would you know, come up again and again? And, and the question was, how long? How long? Uh, not so much uh, how long till we get there. That's a question that often comes up in the back seat of the car or maybe the, uh, the Israelites as they're traveling from Egypt all the way to the land of Canaan were kept asking Moses, Lord, Moses, how long till we get there? Forty more years. And if you keep complaining, it'll take longer. But the question, how long, more like, God, how long, O oh Lord, before you make things right? How long, O oh Lord, until you come and, and, and turn things around? I look around, I see what's, what's uh, taking place here in the world, Lord. Why don't you do something? That's often our question, more of a why question. But it's articulated in the Bible as how long? How long? It comes from a posture of faith. Of faith. Uh, Habakkuk starts out, How long, Lord, must I call for help, but you do not listen? Or cry out to you, violence, but you do not save? That question just reverberates. And it echoes through the heart and the soul. Lord, I don't get it. How long do we have to keep on waiting? Last week, we, we looked at those uh, people who had given their life for, for faith in Christ, and they cried out under the altar, How long, sovereign Lord, holy and true, till you judge the inhabitants of the earth and, and avenge our blood? In the Psalms, it, it speaks often that, that that phrase, how long, comes up again and again and again. Psalm 82, how long will you defend the unjust and show partiality? to the wicked. It's not that God does that. But it feels like it. It looks like it. When you just kind of take a snapshot of reality right now, right here as it is, it seems like God is allowing the wicked to get ahead. And the father cries out, defend the weak and the fatherless. Hold the cause of the poor and the oppressed. The, and these words come from the very character of God that he had shared with his people. This is who I am. And the psalmist is saying, then God act on it. How long do we need to wait? These questions from God. And the Bible assures us that it's okay to ask questions of God. The Bible is filled with, with believers who, who, who wrestled with their faith and wondered, God, what's taking you so long? It is faith. It's faith that is seeking to understand. Faith that, that, that trusts in God, believes in the character of God, but somehow that doesn't seem to match with current reality and saying, God, how long until you make things right? This is Habakkuk's question. Habakkuk means to embrace or to hold on. It's not like he was always around, you know, giving hugs or whatever, but that, that sense of, Embracing God's truth, embracing God's character, hanging on to what you know and believe. Habakkuk, holding on, embracing who God is. It says, though I don't understand, I will still embrace God and keep holding on. Our timeline for Habakkuk, again, very scant information on who he is, where he from. Uh, the, the kings that he was serving under. But if you look at the message and uh, that it deals with the Babylonians, scholars have kind of placed him between 612 B.C., which was the rise of the Babylonian Empire, and then 586 B.C., which was when Babylon came and uh, destroyed Jerusalem and the temple. And Habakkuk's ministry kind of falls in that. Josiah was king in uh, 612 B.C. 
He was the last good king of Judah. Then came Jehoiakim, Jehoiachin, and uh, Zedekiah, and things were just going downhill fast during that time. Interestingly, the book of Habakkuk has musical notations in it. It almost looks like one of the psalms at points. It's got the little words indicating like, you know, maybe the style of music or where to pause and where to rest. It's, it's written uh, for the director of music uh, on my stringed instrument. And so I don't know if he played a guitar or not, but uh, it's interesting. Um, and so scholars, again, have theorized that maybe he served in the temple. Maybe he was one of the Levites uh, there, uh, one of those who, who sang the Psalms uh, daily and, and led things in, in worship. And when you read through Habakkuk, you, you find such a rich imagery of all of the Psalms are found in that book. And so could very well be that he was one of those Levites who ministered in the temple, maybe a singer a musician. We're going to start out with this first question. Habakkuk's first question, God, why don't you do something about the wicked? And he says, how long, O Lord, must I call for help? But you do not listen. I will cry out violence, but you do not save. Why do you make me look at injustice? Why do you tolerate wrongdoing? Destruction and violence are before me. There is strife and, and conflict that just seems to abound. It's everywhere. Therefore, the law is paralyzed and justice never prevails. The wicked hem in the righteous so that justice is perverted. And again, that echo from the psalm, Psalm 119, 126. It's time for you to act, Lord, for your law is being broken. And that's Habakkuk's question, Lord. How long is this going to go on? And the answer that comes, God says, well, if you think this is bad, it's even going to get a lot worse. What? God says, no, no, really, it's, it's going to get a lot worse. Look at the nations and watch and, and be utterly amazed, for I'm going to do something in your days that you would not believe. Even if you were told, I am raising up the Babylonians. Habakkuk is just saying, that's not the answer I was looking for. God, I wanted you to act and make things right, and now you're raising up this, this violent and, 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 and uh, adulterous people? I don't get it, Lord. And so he asks the second question. How can a good God help the wicked succeed? That makes no sense in my mind, God. Why would you raise up the Babylonians? Babylonians, why don't you restore your people? You, Lord. You've appointed them to execute judgment. You, my rock, have ordered them to punish. I don't get it. Your eyes are too pure to look on evil. You cannot tolerate wrongdoing. Why then do you tolerate the treacherous? Why are you silent when the wicked swallow up those more righteous than themselves? It's not the answer I was looking for, God. Why would you do that? And God's response in Habakkuk is, just wait and see. Slow down, Habakkuk. You're getting way ahead of me. My will, my timing, my purposes are perfect. And sometimes faith just needs to slow down and let God be God. We have all kinds of suggestions. We have all kinds of recommendations. And, and as I said, it's okay to ask questions. It's okay to pour out your heart. But in that dialogue, in that interchange, God often will say to us, slow down, just wait for me. And that's hard for us because we want to see results. We want to see things made right. It's hard to be in that place where things just don't feel like they fit anymore. And we wonder and we doubt. God says, hold on, watch. Write down, Habakkuk, the revelation and make it plain on tablets 
so that a herald may run with it, for the revelation awaits an appointed time. It appears in the, uh, of the end and will not prove false. Though it linger, wait for it. It will certainly come and will not delay. It will come in my right time. See, the enemy is puffed up right now. I'm raising up these Babylon. They're getting a big head. They're going to accomplish my will. But his desires are not upright. But the righteous person will live by his faithfulness. Does, does that sound a little bit familiar to you? It's a, yeah, boy, I haven't read Habakkuk lately, but uh, that, that phrase still sounds really familiar. It's found in Romans. It's found in Hebrews. Martin Luther, that was a key phrase for him in his understanding of who God is and God's grace. The righteous person will live by faith, will live by faithfulness. When we trust in God, then we will keep acting and behaving in light of that trust, in light of that faith. Habakkuk, in there. Wait and see, but don't give up the faith. Don't stop doing your duties at the temple, worshiping me. Keep going, even if there is internal conflict over what's going on. The righteous person will live by his faith. Remember, Habakkuk means to embrace or to hold on. Well, the righteous will endure by holding on to God in faith. And as we do that, as we continue to grip our rock, we discover that the rock is upholding us. Habakkuk 2 goes on then to enumerate five woes for the wicked. Five things that, that God is going to do, that God is going to accomplish. First three are laid out and then there's just a little interlude and then more and, and another little summary statement. And again, it's kind of almost laid out like, like a, a piece of music. The first woe, these are reversal of fortunes. In other words, you may see it one way right now, but watch, things will change. Things will reverse. Those who steal will be plundered. The Babylonians will come in and they'll, they'll wreak havoc and they'll plunder Jerusalem, but just wait and see. The Babylonians themselves will be plundered. Those who advance by injustice, they will fall. Those who do violence will themselves be destroyed. And then comes that little interlude. The earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. In other words, Habakkuk, as you wait, as you see, as these things unfold, people will go, oh, wow, I never realized how great God is. It, it, it never struck me in, in, with this kind of impact, the glory of the Lord and how he rules and reigns over all the earth. that moment, that aha moment that, that sometimes you have in worship, sometimes as you're singing a song, sometimes as you're reading God's Word, all of a sudden those words just leap off the page and you go, ah, oh, now I understand. Now I get it. Now it's sinking home for me. God, I had all of these questions for you, but now I see once again how great, how good, how glorious you are. And then the woes resume. Woe to those who shame others. They themselves will be shamed. Woe to those who look to idols because they will find nothing. No, what will you discover instead? That the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth be Silent before him. And again, there's that echo from Psalm 46. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted in the heavens. I will be exalted in the earth. Be still. Be quiet. 
Sit in awe. Meditate on God and His Word. Pour out your hearts to Him, but at a certain point, just wait and watch and see God act on behalf of the righteous. Then comes chapter 3. Chapter 3, which is uh, Habakkuk's song of faith. Again, there's this, this little musical notation that scholars have no clue what it means, a shiganoth or something like that. And so I don't know what a shiganoth is, but I thought maybe it might mean country and western, right? You know, Habakkuk may have gone country, right? And, uh, you know, if you look at his, his psalm, if it were a country song, it would probably go, I ain't got much but I got you. Okay, I know, I'm, I'm not going to leave my day job. <laughs> but I thought maybe you could relate to that. Because Habakkuk starts out and he says, God, first of all, I remember all that you've done. I remember your work going way back to Moses and the Israelites, how you destroyed Pharaoh and his army, led your people through the, dead, uh, through the Red Sea, ended up there in this desert, and you sustained them. God, I remember all that you have done. And God, I remember who you are. God, the compassionate, gracious, slow to anger, rich in love, having compassion and mercy, but yet leave the wicked unpunished. I remember, Lord, who you are. And Lord, I believe that you will act once again. It's not happening right now like I want to see it. I, 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 you know, I've got my prayer agenda. I want to see these things going on. But right now, Lord, I believe that you will act once again, Lord, I ain't got much, but I've got you. And I want to linger on those last verses in Habakkuk. He says, though the fig tree does not bud. A, a fig tree is the sign of, of, of favor, of, of fruitfulness, of sweet delight. Lord, if the fig tree, if I don't have the sweet delights in my life, if there's no grapes on the vine, the fruit of the vine, the joy that God brings, if there's nothing there. Though the olive crop fails, olive oil was so essential to life in Israel. Even if the olive crop fails, Lord, and the fields produce no food, I ain't got much, I ain't got nothing, Lord. There's no sheep in the pen, no cattle in the stalls. Yes, for food, but also for sacrifices. Lord, Lord, we feel empty right now. But we've got you. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God, my Savior. If we had all kinds of time, we could hear all kinds of stories from you. Stories of, stories of pain. Stories of struggle. Dis it's a part of our life. Great tragedy may have struck your life. And you, like Habakkuk and the psalmist and so many others, have cried out, how long or why, Lord? I don't get it. I don't understand. And you're searching for answers. You're, you want to put this experience into a nice, neat theological box and then say, okay, now I get it. It all makes sense. To me. No, it still hurts, even though it's been so many years later. And God said, he understands. He understands that it's faith seeking understanding. Lord, your ways are just beyond me. I can't make sense of them. God just says, I know. Wait and see. In time, that knowledge of the glory of the Lord will come. 
There will be a point in time in which in quietness, maybe you won't have the final answer, but you will have a peace and an assurance to keep trusting in me. I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God, my Savior. Not much right now, Lord. I still got you. And you will keep me going. Faith never knows where it's being led. But it loves and knows the one who is leading. Do you still love God? Do you still know that He is a good God? I'm not saying that all the answers are solved and, and all the is taken away, but faith hangs on. It grips the rock. And the more you grip the rock, the more you feel the rock upholding you. Faith never knows where it's being led, but it loves and knows the one who is leading. We like to pray, God, my road is too rough. Can't you make it smoother? Why do I have to climb this stupid hill? Why does this road have to be so filled with potholes and, and, and depressions and disappointments and, and all these things? Can't you just lay out a nice smooth super highway for me so I can zip along through life? It's not, it's not how life is. And Habakkuk ends with a prayer that I find very interesting. He prays for deer feet. What? He says, the sovereign Lord is my strength. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He enables me to tread on the heights. Last verse of Habakkuk. This is his prayer. God, if you're not going to make my road smooth, then give me deer feet. Well, the, the deer that Habakkuk is probably talking about is the Nubian ibex. And I love that picture there because that, that little rascal is just like right on a ledge about this big. We've got a little video to explain more about the Ibex. <laughs> For many young animals, a wise mother is the difference between life and death. There are some environments where this is particularly true. This inhospitable land in Israel is not an easy place to live. Up here, your footing needs to be firm, and a head for heights is essential. Meet the Ibex. They've made these precarious cliffs their own. But for these newborn Ibex kids, this rocky wilderness makes for a nerve-wracking nursery. They spend the first few days of their life at the very top of the cliffs, relatively safe from predators who can't scale these summits. However, at less than a week old, they must leave their playtime plateaus. They will attempt their first descent of these terrifying rock walls. Their mother needs to find food. Follow me, kids. Now, the steep terrain that has kept them safe can turn treacherous. Their mother leads the way. 
The kids are understandably tentative. But Ibex are born with remarkable feet, made for just this purpose. Slowly, they pick their way down the sheer rock faces with cleft feet that spread wide, exposing rubbery pads that grip the rock. Their mother shows them the best route. She's done it hundreds of times before. Gradually, the kids start to get the hang of it. But they need to focus. One slip could be their last. Rock hoppers are... <clears throat> Lord, make my feet like that of a deer. If the way's not going to be smooth, then I'm going to need the tools to handle the rough terrain. Are you able to pray that prayer? I know life is going to be rough, Lord, but give me what I need to hang on. Give me what I need Keep going forward in faith. It may not be all solved right now. But Lord, I want to trust in you. The Lord is my strength. He gives me the feet of a deer and enables me to tread the heights, to go the, on those places that I never thought I'd be able to or even wanted to. Yet this is where God has brought me and our God is able to meet all of your needs supply everything that you need to continue in your journey of faith with him would you join me in prayer Lord we look at Habakkuk and we certainly brings up those questions in our lives you taught him to wait, to watch, to trust, and to pray for the tools needed to get through. Lord, help us to hang on to you as you uphold us. We want to trust in you. In your name we pray. Amen.